Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Big Ten Men's Basketball Coaches Teleconference. As a reminder, this call is being recorded today on Monday, March 9th, 2020. At this time, I would like to introduce your moderator for the teleconference, Big Ten Assistant Commissioner Adam Augustine. Good morning and thank you all for joining us on the call today. I would ask that you interact respectfully with all the coaches throughout this call. I'd also like to ask our media to limit follow-up questions to one per person. If time permits, please queue in for any additional questions. As a reminder, audio from today's call will be made available on the Big Ten website later today. The first coach on the teleconference is Indiana's Archie Miller. Indiana is the number 11 seed in the upcoming tournament and begins play on Wednesday against number 14, Nebraska. Coach Miller, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, uh, I think everybody here uh, that gets ready to uh, start Big Ten tournament uh, probably took a deep breath here in the last 12 to 24 hours and kind of looked back on the uh, grind of the uh, regular season and, and put it into perspective for their own teams, especially ours. I know we did. and It's an unprecedented league uh, this season. Um, it was from start of the year until Sunday evening, uh, you know, start to finish the best league in America the deepest league in America, and the coaches and especially the players um, and, the, and the, the fans in general, um, the level that we were at this year was just absolutely incredible to be a part of. And um, with 12 teams, you know, basically for two and a half to three months competing, you know, not only for at large bursts but seeding and whatnot, and, uh, you know, it's very, very difficult to navigate that through the highs and the lows, and I think every coach – probably looked at his own team and really was proud at different times of how you had to get through it. And uh, for us, we're no different. We're playing good basketball right now. We're playing very, very hard. And I think offensively, you know, although we struggled against a terrific Wisconsin team the last eight minutes at home the other day, being able to put the ball in the basket a little bit, I think we're playing with a little bit more purpose. So as we get ready to head to Indianapolis, probably like every team, if you can advance in this tournament, if you can win in this tournament, um, it sets you up as being confident to be able to do that against the best because that's what it's been about all year. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Hey, Steve. Your first question comes from the line of Cameron Drummond with Inside the Hall. Archie, obviously it's difficult to beat a team three times in one season, but what are the specific challenges about beating Nebraska for a third time this season as you get ready for them on Wednesday night? Well, you know, we've played them twice, and we played them early, early, and then we played them uh, at the beginning of really the, the, the meat of the schedule, you know, for us. And uh, in both games, they present a lot of challenges with their offense, five shooters at times on the floor, uh, really spread out with unbelievable pace. And uh, they create a lot of problems with their tempo and uh, their spacing. And uh, for us, you know, having to be able to guard the three-point line and guard the dribble are, are the two things that, you know, stand out in, in being able to play them. You know, they can really drive you and put some predicaments, you know, with one, two, five off the bounce. And uh, in game one, really early, they, they crushed us. We weren't ready for it. I thought in game two we did a much better job defensively, but still, um, you know, you, you look back on the games and uh, you had a hard time guarding them. And uh, I think that Cam Mack is one of the premier point guard passers, you know, especially off the of ball screens in the country. And Burke, um, both ends of the floor, causes a lot of problems. Um, Hanif Cheatham and now Green being available in the wing spot gives them more versatility and size off the dribble and scoring. And um, yeah, I really feel like when they're five men, can put together um, a game, you know, they're, they're, they're difficult to guard. So, you know, for us, we've had some success against them on the boards, uh, which is something that can't go away. Uh, but as you go into Wednesday night, you know, all bets are off. It doesn't matter how many times you play the team or how many times you beat them. You're going into a one-game season trying to advance. I'm sure they're doing the same thing, and we're going to have to really be ready to compete. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Adam Jarby, Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. 
Hey, Coach, I'm just wondering with uh, uh, Jerome Hunter, uh, obviously coming off last season and the injury and everything, as you head now into the postseason, what you've made of his development this year and, and where you think uh, he could still continue to improve as he still continues uh, you know, to get fully healthy and, every, and develop and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, Jerome had about as serious of an injury as I've ever been a part of. Um, and to this day, he's probably still not 100%. Um, we're very fortunate he was able to get into the season and, and, and have some success early in the year. You know, he's basically a true freshman, didn't practice, didn't participate in anything that we did, unlike a lot of guys who get injured or sit out. You know, they're at least able to participate in workouts. He didn't do that. You know, he wasn't cleared until, you know, real, realistically July or August of this year. So as I view him, he's a true freshman. And with all true freshmen, they go through ups and downs. But the ones that have uh, a passion to play, compete, work at it, love the game, they find a way to get better. He did that. And uh, right after we, you know, really started Big Ten play in January, he was able to, you know, sustain a little bit of longer stretches of success. And he played a you know pivotal role in our development as a team. Uh, we count on him now to play um, long minutes. I think he's a lot more confident offensively, especially shooting the ball, than he was um, at the start of the season. And you know defensively, he's gone through his lumps as all young guys do. You know, uh, having to guard in college for the first time. But you know, to me, he's a guy that really embodies uh, loving the game, uh, loves to compete plays to win and that showed in the course of a development as a young player and I think that's a credit to him and we're really fortunate he's been able to uh, develop the way he did because he's given us some really good moments he's added depth to our team he's added another perimeter score especially behind the line which we need at times and I feel like as we head into a brand new season here um, you know we look at him as a guy that can uh, you know play a big role and continue to develop uh, the off season you know anytime you can have some success down the stretch in March, that leads you into an off-season of confidence, and I think Jerome is at that point. We can take one last question for Coach Miller. Your next question comes from the line of John Malal with the Herald Times. Hey, Coach. Um, you guys had seven turnovers last game against Wisconsin. You talk about Nebraska's backcourt, but in terms of how your guys are handling the ball at all, and Rob and Devontae, I mean, how much better do you feel like about them as a group now than you did earlier in the season? Um, you know, I, I think our guard play has, has done a really good job. You know, Rob had seven assists and no turnovers in our finale. And I think against uh, Minnesota on Wednesday night, our, our back guard combined for, you know, nine, ten assists and maybe one or two turnovers. So it's been a huge part of our season. You know, when our ups are up, they, they play well. When our downs are downs, we turn the ball over. In particular, away from home, that's been a problem. But I think here in our last eight games, we've sort of come to grips with how we need those guys to play. I think they've embraced it. They're playing a lot better. And our team is now playing a lot more consistent. You know, we're not turning over as much, which gives us a lot better chance offensively to get fouled, rebound, and, you know, score a little bit more. But as we head into the postseason, it's everything. You have to play with less mistakes. Every possession matters even more. And you're going to be in a lot, a lot of tough games like we've been here in recent past. But, you know, for us, I think our guys know if we keep our turnovers down, it's a recipe for us to be a lot better. And I give those guys a lot of credit. I think that uh, they've really embraced it. They've embodied it. They're being more aggressive. But in particular, you know, they're taking care of the ball in a much better way, which has given us a chance to be a lot more consistent. And, you know, you're going to need guard play at this time of year. You know, the postseason comes down at the end of the day. Can guys step up and make plays? And, you know, for us, it's going to come down to our backcourt. Can they step up and make plays here in March and, and find a way for us to be successful and win a few more games? Um, you know, here down the line in the next few weeks, you know, it's going to come down to a couple of those guys stepping up and playing like they've been doing. Coach, thank you very much for your time and best of luck in the tournament. Thank you. The next coach on the teleconference is Iowa's Fran McCaffrey. The Hawkeyes earned the number five seed in the upcoming Big Ten tournament and will take on the winner of number 13 Northwestern versus number 12 Minnesota in the second game of the morning session on Thursday. Coach McCaffrey, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. It's been a uh, an incredibly competitive year and, uh, and just a phenomenal conference. It says a lot about our league. Uh, the quality of team, teams that we have, the, the quality of players, and just how competitive the games have been, I think, bodes well for all of us moving into the conference tournaments, which should be equally exciting. Uh, really proud of our guys, where they stayed together in particular. Obviously, uh, Luca Garza, 
And I've not been around too many guys that uh, consistently put up the numbers that he does and just creates an example of how to prepare and how to work for everybody else in our program. Thrilled to have the opportunity to coach him. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Your first question comes from the line of Mark Emmert with the Des Moines Register. Yeah, Fran, uh, obviously we all expect that Lucas is going to be named Big Ten Player of the Year probably later today. I just We all see what he did on the court, all consistently was. Can you maybe take us behind the scenes a little bit and talk about what his practice and preparation has been like and what's impressed you the most about that? Yeah, Mark, I mean, he's he's really unique in that sense. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, you know, a lot of guys talk about, yeah, put the time in, I, I get a gym and grind. But, you know, for him it's kind of a way of life. Uh, he works on his body. Uh, you've seen him become more athletic, more powerful. Uh, you know, he works he works on his mind. He does, you know, some meditation stuff. So it's in the weight room. Uh, it's on the court with skill development and drills and then, you know, playing five-on-five five when, when, when he can. Obviously, we do a lot of that in practice and in the offseason with open gyms. But even when he goes home and even when he goes on vacation. So uh, it's just a, a never-ending pursuit of excellence that uh, you just don't often see. And uh, there never seems to be any stop in his desire to be better. You know, sometimes you you know you sort of reach a point where, hey, you know what, I'm I'm doing pretty well here. I've I've kind of arrived, and and I don't think you ever see that in him. He feels like he's never arrived. He's just constantly trying to get better. And uh, you know, as I said, you know, I've had too many. I've I've coached some really good players. But uh, Luca Garz is unique. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Fran, I know obviously you have the Big Ten tournament before you have the NCAA tournament, but with as many teams as the league is projected to get into the postseason, how has the conference this year prepared teams for getting into the postseason, and, and what sort of what sort of tournament do you think the Big Ten as a whole might be able to have here in a week? I think it should be really good because I think you make a great point. Uh, the beauty of our league is the quality of it top to bottom, so you have to prepare every game the same way. There's going to be a level of physicality, but that said – each team is different. And, and, and when you get to the NCAA tournament, as you know, you're going to face teams that have different areas that you have to concentrate on. Some are more physical, some are more finesse, some are more guard-oriented, some are more post-oriented. In our league, everybody has terrific post play, great perimeter play, an excellent coach, depth, size. You know, we've played in venues that are difficult to compete in with, with unbelievable crowds, lead the nation in attendance again. Uh, is, so I think all of those things factored together would would indicate that, that our teams will do well and advance. Uh, now, obviously, we have to be respectful of anybody that we play because anybody that's in that tournament is really good. But I think how you have to compete night in and night out prepares you for anything like that. Thank you. Yep. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Coach, thank you for your time today, and best of luck in the tournament. Okay, thank you. And we will next be joined by Minnesota's Richard Patino shortly. The next coach on the teleconference is Minnesota's Richard Pitino. The Gophers earned the number 12 seed in the upcoming tournament. Minnesota will take on number 13 seed Northwestern on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. 
Coach, good morning and thank you for joining us. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Well, obviously um, excited after our performance at home uh, versus Nebraska on senior day. You know, we just, everything seemed to go right offensively. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're close in so many ways. Um, you know, we've played obviously one of the toughest schedules in the country and have competed just a couple of missed free throws. Bounce has gone the wrong way a little bit. Um, you know, but I really like our team. They're fighting. They're they're working hard, and I think they're excited about the opportunity of the Big Ten tournament. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your cell phone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Your first question comes from the line of Marcus Fuller with Minneapolis Star Tribune. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, can you talk a little bit about um, just the upcoming Big Ten tournament, um, the depth of uh, the league and how it might play out in a tournament? It seems like it's a toss-up for who could win it. And, you know, obviously, um, you know, Northwestern beat Penn State at the end of the year. And, and uh, you know, it, this league is, is as deep as you've probably seen it since you've been here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredibly deep. Um, you know, I was looking at uh, ESPN's, you know, strength of schedule, and uh, they got it. They had us one before last game, and all of a sudden I'm looking, and I think it's 12 of the 14 teams were in the top 15 of the strength of schedule from the Big Ten. Um, you know, so it's it's we've you know sitting at uh, eight wins in the league. I mean, maybe on a normal year we're probably sitting at 11 and 12. I mean, that's just how tough this league has been. And there's great players, there's great coaches. Um, you know, I can't remember such great depth. And, you know, Northwestern was one where they had a lot of losses, but, you know, I think we all could kind of see that they were getting better and better. So um, they're probably going to be very confident going into the, you know, the next game. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star 1. You do have a question from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, Richard, kind of following up on that, when you have a league that's had a season like you have, how do you feel that prepares overall all these teams that are, that are going to go to the NCAA tournament? How does that prepare going through a grind like this for then going and playing somebody else and playing different leagues and things like that? How do you think the Big Ten might handle itself when it gets to the NCAA tournament this year? Well, it's a great question. Um, uh, you know, matchups are so important in the NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, and it kind of you throw all the records and even the seeds, you, you throw them out the window. Um, you know, but what I will say is this league, more than any league, has played in high-pressure situations. Um, you know, like I talked about before, I mean, there, you've got 12 or 14 teams that are in the top 15 in the strength of schedule. Um, so they, they've challenged themselves. And, you know, when you get a single elimination tournament, uh, you're going to have to be ready to perform in a high-pressure game. And this league, is that's what it's all about, you know, is high pressure, high stakes. Uh, so I think the league will perform great. And you have a next question from Marcus Fuller with Minneapolis Star Tribune. Coach, um, you know, Daniel had an amazing season, uh, regular season, and uh, obviously expect him to, you know, push for first team honors in the Big Ten today. But talk about what he's done with his uh, with with this team this year to take his game to another level. Um, obviously, a level that we haven't seen a big man or a center in a long time uh, with the Gophers. Yeah, I mean, I think that he's trusted in us, uh, believed in what we've been trying to do development wise. Um, you know, we certainly put an emphasis on getting him the ball um, in the right spots, and he's been very, very productive. I mean, I think the greatest uh, improvement that he's had is, you know, his endurance. He's been able to stay on the court and play through fatigue, and I still think he can get better at that. Um, you know, so he's uh, he's really, really good, and I think he can continue to get better and better if he just continues to trust us. Um, you know, so he's uh, he's obviously had one of the most productive uh, years for a big man in, in Gopher history. Um, you know, and that's great to see. I mean, kind of Jordan Murphy was that guy, and now, you know, we, we kind of passed the baton over to Daniel, and he's been really, really productive. 
Again, to ask such a question, please press star 1. Coach, thank you for your time and best of luck in the tournament. Thank you. The next coach on the teleconference is Northwestern's Chris Collins. The Wildcats earned the number 13 seed in the upcoming tournament and will play number 12 seed Minnesota on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Good morning, Coach. Thank you for joining us. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Sure. Good morning. Uh, you know, Obviously, we're excited about heading to Indianapolis and being a part of the Big Ten tournament. It's such a great event, uh, especially this year with uh, how strong and uh, good the, the, ter- the, the teams have been in our conference this year. Um, you know, I think our guys are going to come in with a, a good amount of confidence. We were able to win two of our last three games. Um, and although they uh, had some struggles throughout the year, I feel like we're we're starting to play some of our better basketball recently. And our young guys are coming of age a little bit. And um, I think our guys are looking forward to the challenge of, of going and playing a really good Minnesota team, a uh, team we've played twice in the regular season. Um, you know, and they've kind of had their way with us both times. So uh, it'll be a good opportunity to see you know how how much we progress to to try to you know give ourselves a chance to be competitive on Wednesday night. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star one. Your first question comes from the line of Charlie Goldsmith with the Daily Northwestern. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> How much do you feel like you've turned a corner since your last game at Minnesota? Well, we've won a couple games, which, you know, I think that's that just raises your confidence level. You know, I think throughout the course of the 20-game conference season, I thought for the most part we were very competitive. Um, although we only had three wins, you know, I, I thought in, in a majority of our games, um, you know, we, we fought hard, we were competitive, we just had a hard time getting over the hump and, and finding a way to close the deal. And in the two of our last three games at Nebraska and then home against Penn State, we were able to to put 40 minutes together and, and find a way to win. And anytime you can do that, I think it raises your confidence level. And, you know, we played a lot of young players this year. And, and, you know, over the span of 20 games, they've had their ups and downs. But I think right now there's an excitement level. I know the guys are looking forward to, to going to Indy and playing loose and, and playing with some confidence and, and seeing what we can do out there. Your next question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Chris, I'm wondering when you go through a season like you've gone through in a league like you're playing in, how has that maybe tested you a little bit as a coach and, and tested some of your, your patience and things like that when, you, like you said, you, you're, in, you're competitive in games and you feel like you're better than your record shows, but you're also playing in a league that's regarded as the best in the, in the country this season? Yeah, no, it was a great question. I mean, anytime as a competitor uh, you go through losses, it's it's really hard. And if it wasn't hard, then you probably shouldn't be coaching or playing, you know, because that's, that's what we do. We, we want to go out there. We want to compete. We want to win. Um, you know, that being said, you know, I thought we did a relatively good job this year of, of staying the course towards what we're trying to build. You know, I think we came into this year, we saw what our roster uh, was looking like in terms of youth and inexperience. And then right away at the early, you know, part of the year, we lost Anthony Gaines, who was our one returning starter as a junior. Um, you know, he went down with a shoulder injury, which made us even younger and more inexperienced. So I think throughout the year, you know, we, we tried to stay the course of being dedicated to playing our young players, getting them experience, throwing them in the fire, so to speak, of, of this big ton conference, you know, knowing that there were probably going to be some tough times along the way. It's it's very hard to win in a league with inexperience and, and young guys, uh, you know, with the level of coaching and, and talent and experience you play night in and night out. And, you know, hope we wanted to win more. I mean, we're not we're not happy with only having eight wins. You know, that's not something we were striving for. But I think at the end of the day, you know, I think people saw the growth in our young nucleus um, where we're headed towards the future. And, you know, we tried to use a lot of examples along the way during the season of teams this year that are really excelling, 
you know, that had a, had to build the same way. You look at a team like Illinois last year with with a lot of freshmen, and you know, had their rough stretches, and, and now they're one game out of the conference championship a year later. You know, Penn State, Rutgers, um, or two other teams heading to the NCAA tournament. You know, that that maybe had to build with young players and and go through some ups and downs, and and now they're reaping the rewards. So. I think we're on that similar trajectory. I really believe in our young players. Um, I think these guys, you know, are showed with their fight and their resiliency this year and and the glimpses of their talent that, um, you know, we're going to be a team over the next couple years that I think can really make a big jump in this conference. Your next question comes from the line of Paul Banks with the Sports Bank. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Paul? Doing good. Uh, how much would winning a couple games in this tournament, kind of building off winning two of your last three here in the regular season, how much would that kind of boost morale and give like a better look at how things went as you go into next off season? Yeah, no, I think it's big. You know, I think going into the spring, um, you know, having some success is always a good thing. I mean, even just. Uh, seeing how our guys left the locker room on Saturday, you know, beating a really good Penn State team and and seeing the smiles, you know, seeing the guys feel really good about, you know, doing something um, together as a group, you know, it it, it brightens you up. You know, it's the, the hardest part about going through tough times is just, you know, these guys are working so hard, they're investing so much, and then when you consistently come up short, you know, you you your human nature is to question if what you're doing is working. And so I think, you know, the fact that we won a couple games here in the last two weeks, the guys are going into the conference tournament. If we're, if we're able to put something together, find a way to get a win, you know, that first game, put ourselves in a position to play the second day. Um, you know, I think it would really be big for us as we head into the spring and summer, you know, with a majority of our team coming back next year. Your next question comes from the line of Marcus Fuller with Minneapolis Star Tribune. Good morning, Coach. Hey, good morning. Just, uh, can you talk about, um, obviously, uh, you, you and Patino came in the same year. Um, you have a pretty good relationship uh, over the years. Um, I know this year has been tough on your team as a young team, and he has a young team as well, two of the younger teams in the Big Ten. Have you guys kind of spoken to each other, other than obviously when you played, um, just about kind of being encouraged of, of the other program and, and and the growth and the moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. You know, I think in coaching, it's always good to have friends that, that you can lean on when you're going through things, good things, bad things, ideas. Um, you know, coaches compete like crazy when you play against each other, but at the end of the day, we're we're all kind of going through the same thing, and, and, and maybe people don't understand the way he would or I would what what the other's going through. And, you know, we we came into the league the same year. We're both young guys. We had similar backgrounds with fathers who were very successful, big-name coaches. Um, so I think we had a lot of similarities, which kind of, you know, bind, bound us as friends. Um, we've gotten to know each other really well. Um, you know, yeah, we, we talk regularly during the year. And, um, you know, obviously it's nice to have somebody um, – that, that you can share things with and, and try to help you through things good and bad. And obviously when we're not playing them, uh, you know, I always root for them. And, um, you know, this year, both of us going through things with, with young teams and trying to grams in, in a very tough league. Um, again, it's, it's nice to have someone that, that you can, that you can talk to and, and kind of help you through different situations. We can take one last question for coach. Your last question comes from the line of Matt Goldstein with Bring Me the News. Hey, Coach. Um, sorry about that. I I was trying to get in um, a question for Coach Tino. Okay. Um, but good good luck <laughs> tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, thank you very much for your time, and best of luck in the tournament. All right. Thank you, guys. The next coach on the teleconference is Maryland's Mark Turgeon. The Terrapins earned the number three seed and a double bye in the upcoming tournament after clinching a share of the Big Ten Championship for the first time in school history. Maryland will play the winner of the Penn State Penn, will play the winner of Penn State against either Nebraska or Indiana in the last quarterfinal on Friday. Coach, good morning and thank you for joining us. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Good morning. Um, yeah, obviously we're 
feeling good today about what happened yesterday, able to get a share of this title, of, you know, the best conference I've ever coached in, top to bottom. Um, you know, day in and day out, it was difficult and uh, had to survive a lot and win, you know, win some tough games. We were able to win some tough games on the road and we were, we were a good home team. So um, it, it's it's a good feeling we winning our first Big Ten title. We've been in the league six years now and to, to get it, uh, it's good. Get that behind us. Get the first one behind us. It's tough, and it's an honor to share it with Wisconsin and Michigan State, two great teams and two great coaches. So uh, we're excited for the Big Ten tournament, looking forward to it, and hopefully, you know, coming in there with a lot of confidence. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1, and your first question comes from the line of Henry Bushnell with Yahoo Sports. Hey, Mark. Uh, congrats on the conference title. Um, I have a two-part question for you. Now that we have a full regular season of data to look back on, what effect do you think the longer three-point line has had on college hoops as a whole this year? And then specifically your team, do you think the new distance has at all contributed to the slight dip in three-point percentage from the past few years to this year? Yeah, well, uh, it's funny. I didn't think it was going to make a big, a drastic change, especially with good shooters. I didn't think a foot or whatever it was, a um, foot and a half would make a make a big difference. But obviously it did. You look across the country, you know, you, you look at stats and, and – um, I think defenses are good. Our league is really well coached defensively, makes it tough. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a huge difference. And um, with us, you know, I, I think we have great shooters. I don't know. Obviously, the line did make a difference. Uh, we didn't shoot the ball particularly well all season. It's amazing what we were able to accomplish shooting the ball the way we did. But, um, you know, I still think we're going to make every shot. I think when our guys shoot it, make every shot. But if you look at the stats, it obviously man, had a huge impact on, on the country and an impact on us. But um, it'll be interesting to see moving forward. Um, guys get used to the line, and, um, you know, they start to shoot it better, uh, you know, in the upcoming years. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Preston Shoemaker with Calm Radio. Hey, Coach. Thanks a lot for the time. Uh, can you talk a little bit about Anthony Cowan Jr., what he's meant to your program, the way he's played this season, and just how pleased you are with his performance? Yeah, he's had a terrific year. He's had a terrific career. Um, you know, the first – you're allowed to work with kids in the summer, and the first week of summer going into his freshman year, I was like, okay, this kid's going to start. And I wasn't planning on him being a starter. <clears throat> and he just worked so hard. And he's been a four-year starter. Started every game since he's been here. But he's really grown in the last two years as a as a point guard. He um, thinking the game, making guys around him better. You know, three, two of our last five games, I think he had nine assists and eight assists, plus scoring 18, 19 points a game or whatever. So <clears throat> he's really come a long ways. Um, of understanding the game. The game slowed down for him. It's game's easier for him now than it was, you know, <clears throat> two years ago. So uh, it's been a process, but really happy for him. And probably where I'm most proud is he's just a really quiet kid, naturally really quiet, doesn't really like to talk, to be honest with you. Uh, and his leadership's been terrific this year. And he had a lot on his plate. <clears throat> and uh, down the stretch, you know, we had a two-game lead. Then we had a one-game lead. Then we were tied. And then we were half game behind going into Sundays. There's there was a lot on him, and I thought he relaxed and played great yesterday, and guys rallied around him. And um, It's just been a terrific career. You know, it's every time, you know, a game ends, it's like, oh, he passed this guy in steals, he passed this guy in assist, and um, he's, he has some pretty prominent names. So big-time career for Anthony, and, and really happy for him. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Andy Koska with the Diamondback. Hey, Coach. Uh, there was about a four-minute stretch in the first half yesterday without Jalen Smith on the floor, and during that stretch, the lead went from five to eight. Is that yeah. the kind of depth and production you kind of need from the Mayich window to, to preserve Smith, even if it's just four minutes on the bench? 
Yeah, you know, I played him 40 at Rutgers, and he was exhausted going into that game. So our, our bench has, has played better. We weren't winning games. You know, Michigan State thumped us pretty good. Rutgers thumped us. But our bench played better in those games. Um, and so you could see it coming. Our starters just weren't playing well. We got them rested, and we played well yesterday. So, yeah, I, I felt very comfortable in that first half stretch um, with those guys on the floor. Um and you know Sorrell's given us good minutes, and and Hakeem's given us good minutes. So I think our our depth is 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 is, is playing as well as it's played all year, which is good going into the Big Ten tournament because we're going to need that uh, if you're going to play back to back days. Um, for you know if you win your first one, so yeah, Josh has practiced well. He's gotten better. He he, he feels like he belongs out there. He did a nice job yesterday. And then Ricky Lindo was live bouncing around playing great defensively and rebounding, which was what he needs to do for us. So, yeah, I'm excited about our bench, you know, heading into the postseason. <clears throat> Your next question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Mark, I'm just always interested in these tournaments when you don't know who you're going to be playing for a couple of days. How do you how do you prepare? Do you do you game plan for specific teams? Do you what, what do you focus on here? not knowing who you're going to play until Thursday, late Thursday night. Yeah, I think it's great that we don't know who we're playing because you just focus on yourself and you try to make your team better, uh, which is what you need to do this time of year. So um, there's some things that we need to continue to work on. There's some things that you can continue, continue to figure out about your team. Um, you know, you always got it when you're going into the playing teams, you know, maybe a third time you got to tweak some things offensively just to, to get, try to get some open shots. So it really gives us a chance for three days. Uh, we'll take today off um, to work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm just making Maryland better. And then, you know, we won't know till 11 o'clock Eastern who we're going to play. And um, we'll probably do most of the scout the next day, the next morning, and just get through, you know, uh, who we're playing. Um, obviously, we played these teams before. Uh, if it ends up being Penn State, we haven't played them since December. Uh, it's been a long time, uh, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, we're a lot of teams, you're doing the same thing. You are who you are type deal. So, um, but I, I think as, as a coach, I love the double buy so we can work on ourselves. Coach, thank you very much for your time today and best of luck in the tournament. All right. Thank you. The next coach on the teleconference is Purdue's Matt Painter. The Boilermakers earned the number 10 seed in the upcoming tournament and will open play on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Coach, good morning and thank you for joining us. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. Um, obviously, it's been a, you know, a great year for the Big Ten, and uh, I think it's a, a wide-open um, you know, tournament for, for a lot of people to, to really help themselves, and hopefully we can help ourselves. Um, we had a tough loss uh, to finish the season to a really good Rutgers team, and Steve Peichel's done an unbelievable job there, and uh, Geo Baker made some huge plays um, for them down the stretch. Ron Harper made a huge shot down the stretch. and um, But, no, it's going to be, a, I think, a fabulous uh, Big Ten tournament in, in Indianapolis, and um, you can just see how the season finished with, obviously, three people sharing the Big Ten crown and a lot of other people um, could have been right there with them. You know, a couple other teams could have been right there with them, and um, just a lot of parity in our league and a lot of strength. You know, from one to fourteen, there's going to be great games. You know, on Wednesday. You know, I think obviously Thursday is going to be a um, kind of wait and see deal. I think anybody can win those games, and um, Ohio State's had a had a really good season. They're a tough team. They're a physical team, and really good defensively. And um, you know, we're going to have to play good basketball. Um, to be able to, you know, to be able to beat them, but it, it's going to be tough. They, they they definitely took it to us in our one meeting this year. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star one. Your first question comes from the line of Paul Banks with the Sport Sports Bank. Hey, Coach. How's it going? Good. My question, heading into this week, do you see the chances that, let's say if you go on a deeper run, you get to Saturday or the finals, that there's a case for an at-large bid, or do you think it's just straight up win or, or, win or go home? you got to run the table to get in. 
Well, I think it's uh, it's hard to really say. I think if we would have won our last game, I think if we could have won a game or two, we'd have been right there. Um, I would say with losing the last game, um, with the you know the, the amount of losses that we have, we'd have to win four straight to, to go to the tournament, and that has to be your mentality. Like you can't get to that point and win a couple games and say, "Hey, this is enough." You, you just can't because there's other factors that go into it. Like, hey, you know, we're in. Don't worry about it. When you're on that bubble, you know you can't think that way. You know you have to really just think about the game you're playing and try to win that. But you know when you take a step back and look at it, you know, you know you have to be able to, you know, get that in your guy's mind that we have to win all these games to go to the NCAA tournament. No different than you know being at Eastern Illinois or Southern Illinois. No matter what kind of season you had, majority of the time, even though we had a, at large bids at Southern Illinois. Um, you know, you're like, hey, we got to win these three games, you know, in, in the tournament um, to go to the NCAA, and so, um, you know, that that's that's definitely where, you know, what we're thinking. But you know, we got to we got to beat Ohio State first, and that's going to be tough. They they've really played well. Your next question comes from the line, I'm Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. <clears throat> Hey, Madam, I'm just wondering, I know you played them sort of late in the season, but but how do you think you're a different team since you last played Ohio State? And as you started preparing on short notice here to play them again, what you see from them compared to uh, what it looked like a couple weeks ago when you saw them? Yeah, well, I'm just glad we're not playing them in Columbus, um, first of all. Um, you know, I you know we were, went through a patch there playing on the road where we, we just didn't play very well. And obviously we had three road wins in conference play then we had one non-conference but we had some stretches there where we really struggled on the road but I also think our opponents had a lot to do with it you know um you know you don't know you you really don't like you you do your best as a coach to get your team prepared to, um but I think whoever was before me I think it was Turge was talking about it you, you have to spend time on your own team and um you know Ohio State's a good team and um you know they're going to get after you they're physical they have good guards um, they have good guys in between. I know they're a little banged up with Kyle Young not in there, but they've played really well here. And Weston's a tough matchup. Hell, both Westons are a tough matchup. So um, it's just one of those things that, you know, 6.30 on Thursday, you know, how you, how you play and how you compete. And I think that's going to be important for us to, just to keep our focus there. Like when we have the, the, the unnecessary turnovers that, that leads to points at the other end or you don't get box outs that lead to points, you know, you just can't give – quality opponents those opportunities i think that's going to be that's been key for us all year when we stay away from those things it really helps us and, and when we don't um sometimes especially on the road you know we can't score enough at that time and so you know just just trying to work on ourselves but also you know get prepared for ohio state again to ask coach a question please press star one your next question comes from the line of henry bushnell with yahoo sports Hey, Matt, I um, have a, kind of a two-part question for you. Coming into the season with a three-point line moving back, did that affect at all how you prepared for the year from like an offensive strategy standpoint? And then now that you look back on a full regular season, what impact do you think that the new distance had either on, either on your team or just on college hoops as a whole? I think it would have been a lot better for us if we had Carson Edwards and Ryan Klein. I definitely <laughs> think that. <laughs> so, um, you know, our personnel changed. Um, I, I don't think from, from our standpoint, you know, we're not a, you know, we're a team that's got to be able to be inside outside and have a good balance of that. And if you can take one of them away from us, the other one can't dominate as much, even though we've had a couple games that, that that's been the case, but for the most part. Um, so offensively, um, you know, trying to generate a good shot and the execution of that has really nothing to do with the arc, I think, from our team yeah. standpoint. Now, defensively, like when we play particular teams, you know, it is, and, and it's not just in whole saying how they're going to get their, you know, their threes, hey, to limit their threes or whatever. Some people are, you know, obviously better at getting inside outside threes, penetrate and pitch threes, transition threes, offensive rebound, kick out threes. So you'd like, there's four different categories there. And in terms of how they're going to get them. And so, like, we, we talk about some of those things. We don't – we want to limit those rhythm threes from them. But sometimes when they they have those moving threes or coming off screens or whatever, those get to be a little bit more difficult because they are. 
Um, now, each guy's a little bit different. You know, you'll get some guys that can really move and shoot sometimes, but most people are going to want those standstill ones. And so we prepare for the, for guys and we try to break those down into different categories to kind of see how well they've shot and shot the ball from a, from a general standpoint. And then, then particularly in those little areas, how they do that. But, um, I know we checked the numbers about halfway through the season and obviously it was down, but it wasn't down drastically at that time to where we felt like it made a difference, not nationally, but just in the games that we had played. Cause I didn't want to take a national number and apply it to us when, you know, we, we got to be able to apply the games that we're in. It's like refereeing. It's no different. Like people always want to talk generally about refereeing. I just want to talk about the guys that ref our games because that's what we, you know, that's what you know. Coach, thank you for your time this morning and best of luck in the tournament. All right. Thank you. The next coach on the teleconference is Penn State's Patrick Chambers. The Nittany Lions earned the number six seed in the tournament and will take on either number 14 seed Nebraska or number 11 seed Indiana in the last game of the day on Thursday. Good morning, Coach. Thank you for joining us. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm really proud of my team. Uh, 21 overall wins, third highest in Penn State history, uh, second highest in Big Ten wins, 11. And obviously the... Um, for us to be ranked, we haven't been ranked in a long time. So being in the rankings for 10 weeks is, is a big deal for, for Penn State. And then these seniors, uh, I want to mention them. They had 76 wins, most by any senior class in the Big Ten history. Um, and uh, we had 61 wins overall and 33 in the Big Ten. And, and that's, uh, that's the most in a three-year span in the Big Ten era. So we, even though we hit some speed bumps here at, at the end, I think overall the body of work is just so impressive what these kids did. After being chosen preseason, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, you know, it was all over the board. And for us to be able to, uh, you know, finish tied for fifth and uh, be a sixth seed going in, this is our third year in a row to get a bye. All these are small steps to help us sustain and be consistent and be a winning program. And uh, again, I'm, I'm truly thank- thankful for Lamar Stevens and, and, and Mike Watkins for what they've done for this program and the stage that they have put us on. And uh, we got a good young group behind them. So I'm excited about the future, but I'm also excited about this uh, Big Ten tournament. It's a fresh season, a new start. Everybody's zero and zero, and, and hopefully we can move forward in, in that type of manner with that mindset. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Your first question comes from the line of Preston Shoemaker with Com Radio. Coach, Mike Watkins suspended for the last game against Northwestern. What's his status going into the Big Ten tournament this week? You know, uh, Preston, it's going to be day-to-day. Obviously, we know Mike's challenges off the floor. Uh, I think we just you know, got to help him right now, surround him, and make sure we're doing what's right for him off the court. He, he will be in practice today for sure. He'll be working out with, with us. He'll be with the team. But I just want to make sure he's completely and totally healthy um, before we put him back in uniform. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of David Hadar with Calm Radio. Hey, Coach. Good morning to you. Um, obviously, hey, you guys had some hiccups here over the last few weeks. But, um, you know, you get the sixth seed, the highest under your tenure with the Nittany Lions. Kind of what's the mentality of the locker room heading into this year's tournament? You, you know, it's got to be fresh start. Um, you know, we, we definitely looked uh, mentally and, and physically weary down the stretch. I think that Michigan State game took a lot out of us. We knew it was at stake. Um I don't want to discredit what Northwestern did. They played awesome, and Chris did, Chris did a great job. But it's, you know, to play with confidence and, and, you know, let's get back to the way we were playing fast and, and getting up and down the floor and really defending and, and rebounding. Uh, but it's, it's got to be a fresh start. It's got to be a reboot. It's got to be a reset. Uh, new season, March. We're in the NCAA tournament. So much to be excited for. So much to look forward to. I just had a great team meeting. I showed a five-minute video of everything that they did this year. The year Georgetown win, Syracuse win, Alabama. Man, we've had some great wins. Win at Michigan State, win at Michigan, win at Nebraska, win at Purdue. Those are hard places to play. Um, let's not discount the body of work that we've had. Yes, every team in the Big Ten is going to hit some speed bumps, and every team has. 
So we hit ours a little bit later, and now we gotta got to get it going again. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Patrick, I'm wondering some of the things you were just talking about there as far as all these things that you've accomplished that are, that are you know, new standards for the program and things like that. When you're sitting there at, at 20 and 5 and you're, and you're achieving these things, what is that challenge then of trying to guard against some of that, that fatigue that, that you kind of referenced there and trying to, to make sure that we've gotten to these things we haven't gotten to before, but we can't be satisfied here? How, how difficult is it to, to be preaching those things and to, to be trying to get those messages across when you're playing in a conference like this this year and, and facing those types of challenges? It's just such a great question, and it's something that we talked about as a staff for a long time, and I talked about with the team. Um, that's why you're impressed with, with what Michigan State does and Tom Izzo year in and year out, um, and, and Jay Wright and Villanova and all these guys. You, you know, to be able to stay focused on the task at hand, to be able to stay present and live in the moment, social media has become so powerful that platform is so powerful there's just so much noise and so much distraction in everybody's head not just the players everybody fans administration coaches everybody it's something we're definitely going to look at after the season on how you stay the course how you how you don't uh, lose sight of what's important and that's getting better every single day you step on the floor and keep keep it moving forward like not not taking your foot off the pedal, right? showing up at practice, really competing, really getting better. And, and again, these guys, I, they look stressed out a little bit. They looked a little weary. And, and, and we try to dial it back in practice. We tried to dial it back with film sessions, really try to clear their head and remind them to put their walls up and stay present. But it's easier said than done. So I think this junior and sophomore class that we have, and I'm, I'm really excited about this group coming back. I think there's some really valuable lessons that we can teach them as we move forward as a program. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1. You have a question from the line of Preston Shoemaker with Com Radio. Hey, Coach, one more question. What does it look like preparing for a game when you won't know your opponent until the night before? What kind of challenges does that bring? How will you guys be preparing for your game on Thursday? Yeah, uh, you know, Preston, it's, it's got to be about us, right? Uh, you know, we didn't finish as, as well as we had hoped. So it's got to be about us. Let, let's get our confidence back. Let's get our trust back. Let's, let's go back a little bit to go forward. Let's, let's go old school practice today and really focus on what made us so good throughout the entire year, specifically that, that eight-game winning streak that, it was the, the longest winning streak in Penn State history as far as in the Big Ten. Let's, go, let's dive into to those little details and make sure we have that going into the Big Ten. But uh, obviously, you, one coach, one assistant takes Indiana, one assistant will take Nebraska. Um, but right now, I think we put ourselves in a really good spot to focus on ourselves over the next couple of days and prepare for, for whoever will play Thursday night. Coach, thank you very much for your time, and best of luck in the tournament. Hey, thanks, guys. Bye. The next coach on the teleconference is Michigan State's Tom Izzo. The Spartans earned a share of the regular season title for the third consecutive year and are the number two seed in the upcoming tournament. Michigan State opens play on Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time and will play the winner of the number seven seed Ohio State and number 10 seed Purdue match. Coach Izzo, thank you very much for joining us. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Well, I think like everybody probably agrees, you know, there's been some ups and downs with all of our teams this year, and some of it's been the scheduling, some of it's been there's just so many good teams, you know. You it, So if you have a lot of good teams and you lose two, three in a row, and all of a sudden you get a couple road games, and um, it's uh, it's been the most difficult of my 25 years, and uh, I think that's a credit to the other Big Ten teams. So the Big Ten tournament... Um, you know, I, I mean, I think there's so many teams that could win it. It'll probably be the most exciting uh, to date uh, since uh, they've started this thing. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. 
Your first question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Tom, I had a, a question from back in, in the day real fast for you. Uh, I just wondered how you got your first head coaching job back in, in high school there after you graduated from Northern Michigan. How did you get that very first job? Um, it opened, uh, the high school job opened, and uh, there was a guy named Bruno Marana, whose son actually went to Michigan State, was a quarterback here, and then transferred back to Northern, and uh, we kind of recruited him back. And uh, so his dad was the AD, and he had a, another brother who was going to be a senior, and they just asked me if I'd have an interest. They had no teaching spot open. I was working on my master's, and... Uh, and so I, I got hired. It was a huge payday. I, I don't know if I made fifteen hundred dollars or whatever it was, but it was uh, it was fun and actually uh, won a conference championship. And at Ishpeming, who had a few years earlier come off uh, one of the big upsets, they beat Hudsonville. I think it was in football, and so a big football school up there. And uh, we won, and then got beaten there. Regional finals by uh, by my old high school, Air Mountain. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Henry Bushnell with Yahoo Sports. Hey Tom, um, I have a bit of a big picture question. Now that we have a full regular season of of data to look back on, what effect do you think that the longer three point line has had? either on college hoops as a whole this past year um, or, or on your team specifically? You know, it's been bizarre. I think all shooting percentages are down. I don't know if defenses are up. Like in our league, uh, everybody's so good defensively, and I don't know if that has something to do with it or uh, you know, the line being back and people are still taking a lot of threes, so the percentage, the overall percentage of the three-point shot and the two-point shot is going to go down, but you know, I've always been a proponent that I wish it would go back even farther because I think it should be a shot that, you know, if you want to take it, you get a benefit. But if you don't take it, it's, uh, it's a negative. And kind of where it's been, it's kind of forcing people to take more threes. Where um, So I'm, I've always been the NBA guy. I think it should be moved back. And, and so it's a long, long shot. and Maybe people wouldn't take as many of them. And open up the lane a little bit more, but uh, I just think it's a combination of a couple things, everybody getting used to it. Uh, one, uh, number two is in our league, I think teams are so good right now and they're so good defensively that uh, it's making it more difficult. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Chris Farmer with Spartans Wire. Morning, Coach. Hey, Chris. Well, first off, I want to know how you celebrated last night when you got home, uh, your 10th Big Ten title. And second mm-hmm. off, when did, it, did when did the flip the, the script flip for Aaron Henry and Rocket? How they've kind of made you guys a, a formidable four now to go with uh, Xavier and Cassius? Well, I think Aaron has, has started to come on the last six, eight games, and I think Rocket probably around the same time. You know, it's been a, it's been really good. It's been something that uh, I think, uh, you know, they've grown. Uh, Aaron, let's face it, he came off a strong end of last year, and I, I didn't think he was playing as good at the beginning of the year, you know, and he got back to guarding, rebounding. He's rebounded the ball so much better. And that has helped his offense, and that's usually the way it happens. In Rocket's case, um, he's been so good defensively that he keeps himself on the floor, and then he's got the ability to, to score points, you know. he just got the ability to do that, and because of that, uh, now I've got two really good defenders out there, and, uh, and both guys, are their defense is turning some of that into offense. Your next question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. One more for me. Um, As you've gone through this season now in the Big Ten, I just wonder how you feel the league is prepared when you get to the NCAA tournament here in another week or so. Um, What what do you think this season 
What do you think we might see from the Big Ten when they get to, to the NCAA tournament this year? You know, it's 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 always hard to predict because it always comes down to matchups. You know, I mean, we've been beaten by Middle Tennessee, you know, so as a two fifteen, and but I think the Big Ten is going to do awfully well because there's been a lot of close games. There's been a lot of games that uh, people have found a way to win. Um, I think we've beaten the hell out of each other, uh, which I think makes you stronger. At the end of the day, I've heard some people say, "Well." You know, there's nobody in our league that's, you know, separated themselves as much, and I would agree with that. But I don't think that's a negative. I think it's because there's so many good teams. Um, You know, some of the other conferences, there's some separation because there's four or five really bad teams that they play twice, and you're going to get ten wins right off the bat. That's not happening in our league. So um, I think they'll do very well, you know, and, and we'll get judged on it, I'm sure. But at the same time, Time, um, at the same time, uh, you know, it all comes down to those matchups at the end. Your next question comes from the line of Kyle Austin with MLive.com. Hey, Tom, just had a question about some of your banners up there, actually. Noticed that you put the uh, Big Ten tournament banners up, I think, for the first time this offseason. Just wondering what yeah. went into that decision. Uh, a lot of the... Uh, you know, we looked at ACC schools and that. You know, the Big Ten banners have not been as big a deal in the Big Ten. And, uh, you know, because we were probably the last conference, major conference to go to it. And both my staff, players, fans, they all think that, you know, in some places that is honored more than the regular season, which I don't agree with. So we just decided that uh, we were going to do that. And, uh, our people across the street uh, did it, and I think it's been a good thing for us. Coach, thank you for your time today, and best of luck in the tournament. Thank you. The next coach on the teleconference is Rucker Steve Peichel. The Scarlet Knights are the number eight seed in the upcoming tournament, and will play number nine seed Michigan on Thursday, after, Thursday afternoon at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Coach, good morning, and thank you for joining us. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Good, good morning, and, and thanks for having me on. Um, you know, first I want to you know, congratulate, you know, Wisconsin, and Michigan State, and Maryland, um, Coach Gard, Coach Izzo, Coach Turgeon for, you know, winning the league. It's unbelievable. Um, it's been, you know, one of the most competitive uh, seasons ever probably in, in league history, and those three guys did an unbelievable job with their team. So I want to congratulate them and um, – you know, just say we're excited to be heading out um, to play in this big uh, 10 tournament here. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Your first question comes from the line of Keith Sargent with NJ.com. Hey, Steve, how are you? Keith, great. How are you today? Do, uh, doing well. Um, there's an old cliche that it's tough to beat a team th- uh, three times in a season, but for you, it's obviously the opposite where you lost to Michigan twice. How much of a challenge is it to beat a team that you haven't beaten yet? I mean, there's just challenges uh, up and down this league and with every team that we play, obviously. Michigan, really good. I'm a top 25 team, well coached, and I mean, terrific, and maybe one of the best point guards in the country, and one of the best centers in the country, and one of the best, couple of the best shooters in the country. So they pose many problems for us, but uh, we try to go one and zero, Keith, as you know, with our team. And and uh, obviously, uh, no matter who you get in this in this league, it's going to be a huge challenge. But um, you know, our guys are playing well and are confident, and uh, uh, we'll go we'll go out there and. and try to play really, really good basketball, and we're going to have to do that in order to, to play with Michigan. Your next question comes from the line of Jerry Carino with Gannett, New Jersey. Hey, Steve, just staying on Michigan for a second, uh, what, after two close losses to them, what is this, the biggest, single biggest thing you guys have to do differently or better, if anything, to uh, yeah. change this, to tie this time around? Well, we have to do, you know, a lot of things better, uh, obviously. Uh, you know, didn't shoot the ball well, didn't 
take care of the basketball. Turnovers were an issue. Um, you know, didn't finish plays, uh, but give them credit. I mean, they're really good. And they're efficient offensively, one of the more efficient teams in the country. They got great size, too. And they have uh, Simpson, you know, a leader in the nation in assist. And when you do that in a league like ours, where there's some great defensive teams, you know, you're playing a point guard who's. Uh, I think he's the winningest player ever in their history. He and Teske in the history of the school in Michigan's had tremendous, uh, you know, tradition. So we got to play, you know, we got to play outstanding basketball like as we had to do the last two games to, to win games in this league. So, um, you know, we'll we'll start preparing this afternoon. Your next question comes from the line of James Hawkins with the Detroit News. Hey, Steve, you, you've spoken highly of Xavier. Um, do you feel like you have a better idea of maybe how to handle him um, in this third meeting? And I guess <laughs> how much more difficult is it going to be to contain their offense with Isaiah Livers back? Yeah, I mean, Livers is, is, a, is a problem and uh, one of the best shooters in the country to go with the, one of the best point guards in the country, but uh, and the most experienced point guard in the country. So, um, you know, uh, I wish I had, you know, the formula – um, you know, you're playing an outstanding program and, and again, well coached. And it's not just him. You know, you got a seven foot two center. You got to worry about him. I think uh, Wagner is playing as good a basketball as anybody in the, in the country. I mean, his stretch in the last six games have been like unbelievable for a freshman. So they have a 6'10 shooter in him and with livers and, and a point guard who's a surgeon passing the ball wise and throwing their big guys up front with Davis and. Um, you know, Teske, you got you got problems on the wing. You got problems at the point guard and, 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 and around the post. So uh, we have to, you know, play really well. We can't reinvent the wheel here. We've done a good job. I think we're the sixth best defensive team in the country uh, right now in the last efficiency uh, defensive assist efficiency stats. So we got to play great defense, and you got to do a lot of things right. You got to be perfect on your coverages, you know, against these guys. Your next question comes from the line of Andrew Kahn with Ann Arbor News. Hi, Steve. You mentioned, uh, you know, your guys shooting um, in the first two matchups. And, yeah, from, from three, it, it wasn't good, I guess. Uh, do, do you take any comfort in that fact, knowing that, well, geez, this time maybe it'll it'll kind of regress towards the mean? Or is it something Michigan, you know, does really well that, that has you concerned? Well. I mean, they do a lot of things well, you know, defensively too, and they got great length. But you know, quite honestly, we missed a ton of shots around the basket too in both games. So, you know, we got to make some threes. That obviously would help us. Got to get to the free throw line. That would help us too. But, you know, finishing around the basket, you know, is a huge, you know, key for us because we didn't in, in their games, and that's to their credit, their length, and their size. Your next question comes from the line of Chris Iceman with. The Bergen record. Hey, Steve. How are you? Chris, good, thanks. Um, getting that win at Purdue and the way you guys played and how well you guys played, I mean, how much do you think that that helps your players' confidence going away from the rack again, obviously, this week in Indy? Well, I mean, one thing, we've been pretty confident even all year. I think I think our last seven games were quad one games, playing the best teams in the country. I think we're the only team that played seven straight quad one games to finish the year up. And so we played every one of the best teams in the country on the road, at home. You know, we've been in every game, you know, and our guys, you know, they've had great confidence, even though we were a young basketball team. Um, they've had great confidence all year. So, um, you know, we got to prepare the right way. we got to, you know, make some shots. That makes life a little bit easier. But going to Purdue, a, a team that I respect and, and maybe the toughest place in the league to play over the last five or six years, especially for us, um, you know, play in the way that we did and, 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 you know, real real confidence booster for us. We've got time for one last question for Coach. Your last question comes from the line of Jerry Carino with Gannett, New Jersey. Steve, I have one more. Uh, the, the all Big Ten teams are going to be announced later today. Uh, what's the case for, uh, for Geo Baker to become Rutgers' first ever all Big Ten uh, player, first, second, or third team? Well, I will tell you, man, our league is so good. It was one of the hardest things you had to sit down and look at the names and look at the players in the league. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I really uh, – uh, unbelievable job and unbelievable talent in the league and, and obviously well coached. But, uh, you know, we're tied for fifth in this league. It's the hardest year in the league, you know, history, I think. You know, that's what some people are saying. 
Um, we certainly wouldn't be in that place, you know, without Geo Baker. I mean, just does so much for us and, you know, uh, scores and, and, and plays defense and gets assists and steals. And, um, you know, he had to play through a broken thumb, too, this year in the middle of, of, of this season. And uh, he had as good a year as, as, as any guard. I wouldn't trade him for anybody. And, and uh, you know, I hope he gets honored for having a great year. And, and we as a you know program won one games, won, won a lot of games, being 11-9 and nine in this league and, um, you know, playing a stretch at the end that was, you, you know, a gauntlet of, of teams and all playing all ranked teams and, you know, I think 11 teams have been ranked in our league. I mean, just the job that he's done and the leadership that he's brought, you know, to our program has just been unbelievable. And he's a really good defender, too. So people will talk about offense and scoring. And, you know, he, he does a lot of things for us. So I hope he's honored that, that way. But, you know, I keep telling our team it's about winning and, you know, don't worry about those other things. And, and uh, but, but I truly think he deserves, you know, to be on, be on those teams. Coach, thank you for your time this morning, and best of luck in the tournament. Thanks, guys, for being on. I appreciate you having me. The next coach on the teleconference is Wisconsin's Greg Gard. The Badgers clinched a share of the Big Ten Championship for the first time since 2015 and earned the number one seed in the upcoming Big Ten tournament. They will play the winner of Game 3 on Friday afternoon at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Coach, thank you very much for joining us today. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Sure. Thanks for having me on. Obviously, uh, a terrific way to wrap up the regular season on Saturday with our win in Indiana to clinch a share, and so proud of our guys of how they battled through uh, so many things throughout the course of the year and even in the last off season. But uh, you know, looking forward to uh, you know getting back to work and preparing for the Big Ten tournament, which will, if it's any indication of how the regular season went, that Big Ten tournament's going to be phenomenal for fans. A little stressful on coaches, but. Uh, like I said, just happy for our guys to be able to clinch a piece of the championship and and uh, looking forward to what's coming next. Thank you, Coach. We'll open it up for questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1. Your first question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Greg, I know you've talked about this throughout the season, but the numbers with with and without Micah Potter, it seems like he obviously gave you such a big lift. How did you, as as you get into the postseason now, what kind of impact has he given this team, and, and what do you see from him as you now head into the postseason? Well, his impact started long before he stepped on the floor. I mean, that started last December. Um when he transferred and how he was able to impact our locker room from a leadership standpoint, obviously the, the competitive level that he brought to practice and helped us even a year ago. Um, and obviously we've had to, you know, work through trying to get the waiver for him, which never, never came to fruition. So for him to step in and do what he's done is, I mean, he's what he did for us Saturday down the stretch is kind of a microcosm in terms of the leadership, the, the big play after big play with the rebounding and, and things like that and, and making shots. And so, like I said, his impact started well before he ever put on a uniform and, or took a shot. Um, we're just obviously fortunate and very uh, thankful he chose to come to Wisconsin. And he's been a great asset in our locker room with our leadership. He fits right in in terms of what we're about and, and who we want to be. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star one. You have a follow-up from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. I figure while you're here, what do you think of uh, you know not knowing exactly who you're going to play? What um what what is the then what will the next day or two be like? Just kind of getting your team ready for for an unknown opponent and uh, the the thought of just being the number one seed in the tournament. What does what does that feel like? Yeah, I mean we've been there before in terms of being the one seed, and obviously when you get to to this point in time, you're playing teams that are good and we played Rutgers and Michigan here in the last two weeks we played them both so um, you know we'll use today's yet an off day for us to, we've been through kind of a gauntlet here in four games in the last nine days so I wanted to get guys a little chance yesterday and today to kind of recruit catch their breath a little bit um, get their legs and and we'll use you know Tuesday Wednesday Thursday before we had the Indianapolis um, 
Thursday night to prepare. We'll split the week between the two teams, but you know, fortunately, we've we played them both here recently, so all, all that will be fresh in their mind. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. You do have a question from the line of Preston Shoemaker with Com Radio. Coach, thanks for the time. Your team just want to share the Big Ten this season in what's been said over and over, one of the most competitive seasons in recent memory. What does that say about the fight of your team and how you guys are preparing for the next few weeks of tournament play? Yeah, it's a credit to our guys. I mean, what what we've walked through over the last you know, nine months, given the the accident that happened with Howard Moore back in last Memorial Day weekend, it, it kind of, you know, it, uh, it it gave this group an anchor to of a real life adverse situation to always draw back on. That as we face different obstacles through the year, um, it, it put them in perspective and it allowed guys to come together. Um, it forced guys to come together at some points in time, and uh, and obviously in this league, I've been in it 18 years. Um, you know, 14 as an assistant here in the last four and a half or so as the head coach. It's never been the depth and the parity have never been like this. So to be able to say you've been, you know, one of the champions of this league and, and arguably the the deepest and most competitive it's ever been uh, is a great compliment to our team and to our players and how they've rallied together and my coaching staff and everybody that's had their fingerprints on this. There's been a lot of people that have helped and helped and, and been a part of this success. So um, I said just uh, excited to continue to coach them and, and see what more we can accomplish yet this year. We can take one last question for coach. Your next question comes from the line of Paul Banks with the sports bank. Paul, your line is open. Oh, sorry about that. I had the mute button on. Um, Coach, your last response, you mentioned uh, real-life adversity, and it reminded me of some really insightful and intelligent things you said about the meaning of that word a couple of years ago. So my question to you is, how would you, how would you define that word adversity versus how it often gets used as a cliche in the sporting world? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you brought up probably what I referred to when I went through the loss of my dad. That um, you know, when you face those personal things, um, it, it really puts and real life things that impact people's lives. Or in this case, uh, obviously with the car accident back in May, took two people's lives and Jen and Jade more. It, it it puts things in perspective and it gives you context to what's really important in life and and uh, obviously it makes some of the other over-dramatized situations that we deal with in sports, um, it puts them in perspective and makes them extremely minuscule to compared to real-life situations where, uh, like I said, lives are taken, lives are impacted forever. And uh, like I said, and it's, it's been, unfortunately, um, for what we've had to go through, and specifically the Moore family and, and our players, it's been a it's been a life experience that hopefully they never have to experience again, but it also shows you you know, when you stay true to who you are, when you care the, care about the people close to you and, and you take care of each other and have each other's back, you know, there can be, you know, a, a great story come from it and you can learn so much from it. And that's what this group has done. I mean, they've done a terrific job of staying together through very trying times. And uh, like I said, I'm proud of them, what they've been able to accomplish and more proud of how they've grown together and how they'll, they've handled these things in a very mature um, aspect for being 18 to 22 years old or 23 years old, they've had a lot thrown at them, and, and uh, hopefully this will, uh, as they reflect back as they go on from Wisconsin after they're done playing in X number of years, uh, they look back and say, you know what, when when they have to deal with their own personal issues, is they will always come. There'll always be something left to deal with in life that they can reflect back and anchor back to what they've experienced here, and hopefully that helps them handle those situations in the appropriate way when those come in their lives down the road. Well, Coach, thank you for your time this morning, and best of luck in the tournament. All right, thanks for having me on. Take care. The next coach on the teleconference is Michigan's Juwan Howard. The Wolverines earned the number nine seed in the upcoming Big Ten tournament and will open play on Thursday afternoon against number eight seed Rutgers. 
Coach Howard, thank you very much for joining us today. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very uh, excited to have this opportunity to uh, uh, to, to compete uh, in the Big Ten uh, conference play. Um, our team is uh, excited about the uh, the opportunity that presents us. Uh, we're looking forward to the matchup uh, that we're going to face on Thursday versus Rutgers. Um, as you all know, and uh, I'm sure it's been stated earlier, uh, our our conference has been extremely competitive throughout the year. Uh, it's been one of the toughest conferences uh, that over the years that I've witnessed uh, as a former player and uh, now as a coach uh, to, to look at you know each team um, and how competitive and how hard um, the the caliber of players and coaches that are uh, you know, they're competing you know night in and night out at a high level. Uh, it's been a very competitive compass and we've welcomed the opportunity and we've welcomed the challenge. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Your first question comes from the line of Keith Sargent with NJ.com. Thank you, Juan. Um, there's an adage that it's tough to beat a team three times in a season. Do you subscribe to that, and what will it take to, to do that against Rutgers? I'm sorry. Um, I, I didn't hear the first part. Can you please repeat it? Yep, there's an adage in, in coaching circles that, that it's tough to beat a team three times in a season. Um, you've obviously beaten the Rutgers twice already. Uh, do you subscribe to that adage? And what would it um, take to beat Rutgers a third time? Well, uh, it's tough to beat a team, you know, just one time when you face them. So, uh, yes, we're fortunate enough where we, we played them twice. Um, both games are hard fought, um, competitive games. Um, one game was played over at MSG in New York, and the uh, second game was played at Rutgers. So the first game, to me, felt like it was a road game, even though it was a home game for us. Uh, you know, I, we got a chance to witness you know, many Rutgers fans there to support their team. Uh, I think it was more May, more Rutgers than it was Mays and Blue. Uh, but now uh, we hit the conference play. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be a tough matchup for both teams, but uh, both are, are going to be – fighting claw and trying to get a victory. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Juwan, I'm just I'm wondering, I know obviously, you know, you, you take the head coaching job this year, but what, what, was, what were the conversations that led to you first deciding to get into the coaching profession when, when you're with the Heat? Like, how did you what were those conversations like when you decided, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to be a coach. Well, I, I've had conversations uh, prior to arriving to uh, the Miami Heat when I, I was playing for the Portland Trailblazers, and you know, first my mindset was, you know, at some point to work in the front office, but at the building a relationship with Nate McMillan, I knew Monty Williams. He was an assistant coach uh, for the Portland Trailblazers, and I should just pick their brain about basketball about um, their their style of coaching, uh, you know, as far, far as both players being a former player in the NBA, you know, why did they get into coaching? And and that was, like, pretty much, you know, a, a great segue into, like, what my next step in life will be. And so when I went to the Miami Heat and signed on with them and became a player for three years, um, the, the I started to think and look at the game in the light of, like, of just teaching and, and learning how to how to help you know game plan and develop into not only just a player but a, a coach for the future, and so I had a great conversation with David Fisdale uh, one day after the season was over. We won our first title, and uh, we were just talking about just coming back and you know teaching the game at some point. He felt like I had a great eye for it. Um, uh, he also felt he, he saw the passion in my. And my voice, well, he heard the passion in my voice, and he also saw the passion in practice on how I help, well, not just with the younger players, but with the veterans on just being a leader. Um, and then, you know, at, when the season was over, I, I had a really good conversation with Pat Riley about, you know, I, I wanted to, at some point, you know, work for the organization. And uh, he asked me, you know, what I want to do. And, and we were talking about coaching. He said, hey, you know, you just have that it factor as a coach. And 
And I was like, well, coach, you know, I'll, I'll give it some thought. I uh, appreciate the, you know, compliment. And, you know, it was a longer conversation than that. But um, I went back two weeks later and, and I said, well, instead of working in the front office and becoming a scout and trying to build my way into becoming someday a general manager or president for a team, and I want to, I feel going to coaching where it will help teach me how to learn the game in a different lens. And then if I ever wanted to come back into the front office, I will have a, a really good step on a lot of GMs because I've coached before and I've seen you know, what it takes to be in the gym and developing players and uh, worked on game planning. And I also can have an, identify what type of team that I wanted to to have on a roster that would help uh, build a winning culture. So, um, so while with the Miami Heat for those six years, um, I learned a lot and I developed into I prepared myself to become a head coach someday with the help of Eric Spolstra. Well, Coach, thank you very much for your time this morning and best of luck in the tournament. Thank you. I appreciate it. The next coach on the teleconference is Ohio State's Chris Holtman. The Buckeyes earned the number seven seed in the upcoming tournament and will open play on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Ohio State will take on number 10 seed Purdue in that contest. Coach, good morning, and thank you for joining us. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Yeah, good to be with you guys. Um, yeah, it's uh, obviously it's going to be should be a really really exciting uh, Big Ten tournament. Uh, it was obviously a very exciting regular season with the overall depth of the league. You know, every coach I run into that's been in this league for a while, uh, Tom just said it yesterday was was it's the deepest the league's been in his thirty five plus years. So uh, it's a real credit to the league, the quality of teams. Uh, it should be a great tournament. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Your first question comes from the line of Steve Hellwagen with 24-7 Sports. Yes, Coach. Uh, you played Purdue one time during the regular season, and I know you won the game at home. Just some general thoughts about uh, how that game kind of transpired and your thoughts about how they finished the season as well. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously got a tremendous respect for, for uh, Purdue. Um, you look at their wins this year, and they've, they've, been, they've had some phenomenal wins, most recently at Iowa. Where I just thought they were they were tremendous. Um, you know they've they've uh, they've got different ways they can attack you. It's you know we just played them. You know played them fairly recently. I think was it middle of February um, at home. Uh, you know I think what you expect from them is a team that really really executes well. They're great at turning you over. They're great on the glass. Um, you know, as we all know, there's there's very little separation in this league uh, among most teams, especially when you're talking about being on a neutral floor. So, you know, it'll be it'll be a great challenge for us. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star one. Your next question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Good morning, Chris. Hey, Adam. You played you played some tough defense this year, uh, most of the season. But uh, in these last two games, um, you haven't shot the ball particularly well from three. I wonder if that's a credit to how some teams are defending you, or or what you've seen from from how you've shot uh, these last two games. You know, I think it's a little bit of both. I I probably would be more inclined to give give credit to the defense. I think we might have played the top two defensive efficiency teams in the league the last two games, or at least two of the top three. So. I think that probably has had something to do with it, um, you know, and and we've we've had some clean looks. Um, we just haven't been able to knock the clean ones down that we've had. But uh, I, I give give both Illinois and uh, and Michigan State credit for for them kind of doing a good job taking that away from us. So um, you know, obviously it's something we we rely on. It's going to be important for us, uh, but we've got to find other ways. Uh, other ways to, to score the ball, and at times we did yesterday. And obviously, when we beat Illinois at home, there were found other ways to attack them. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. And 
and you have a question from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. When you're going into a conference tournament that is as deep as, as this one is, as a coach, do you allow yourself to take a big picture look and say this should be a really entertaining week of or you know weekend of basketball, or are you too focused on like the challenge ahead of you of you know I've got my own personal battle I got to fight? Yeah, yeah, no, obviously I think for 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 fans and for you know those that love the game, um, media that cover it. Um, in, in fans of, of all the teams, it, it's going to be, I think, an electric, uh, electric tournament. Um, obviously, it's in a great city. Um, you know, I think I think we do realize in, in playing Purdue, it's it's not necessarily going to probably be a neutral environment uh, given given the location, uh, but I think it's going to be really really well attended by a lot of fans. A great city for basketball. The depth and the competitiveness of this league has been well documented. So you're you're obviously going to have some games that go down to the last three or four minutes. Um, and I think you know you have some teams that are playing for a lot, whether that's seeding in the NCAA tournament or a chance to improve their resume. Um, and then you know obviously beyond you know playing for. Um, a tournament championship. So uh, a lot to play for and the parity. Uh, we all know that in this league. When you look at, uh, I think, the, the teams that, that uh, tied for the league championship lost six, which is, uh, somebody said, the first time in maybe 15 years. So I think it's it's uh, it's well documented and it's going to be a great competitive environment. Uh, but our focus is, you know, is solely on preparing to to play Purdue. I I would love to be able to say I could sit back and enjoy the other games, but uh, our focus will be exclusively on Purdue. Your next question comes from the line of Steve Hellwagen with 24-7 Sports. Yeah, Coach, I'm curious as you review yesterday's game, it seemed like you guys got a lot of very good looks and good shots that, that just for whatever reason, didn't go in. Some of it probably yeah. Michigan State's defense, but you're just your thought on the opportunities you had uh, to, to maybe put a few more points on the board. Yeah, Steve, I thought we had some good looks. I thought we had some good looks around <laughs> the basket. Um, you know, probably as much as anything, a couple that went in and out. Um, I, I thought we had some, some, some clean looks. Um, you know, this this time of year, teams really, um, especially in league play, are going to do their best to take away your leading scores. And I think what we saw with, with you know Michigan State is they clearly were focused on Caleb um, and, and to some degree uh, a Dwayne as well as kind of a focus of their, their scouting report. And we had some other guys step up and score the ball, which allowed it to be a, a competitive game. But you know, I think that's what we're going to need. We're going to need other guys when teams kind of sell out to taking a couple guys away and, and have the ability to do that. We're going to need other guys to, to kind of raise their level um, and do that on a consistent basis. But I thought we got some clean looks. I thought, you know, they, they're not a team that turns you over a whole lot, uh, but I thought we did a decent job taking care of the ball. I just think the overall defensively, we weren't quite, in terms of uh, our, our, our first-time defense and getting getting first-time rebounds, we, we need to be better in that area. Coach, thank you for your time this morning, and best of luck in the tournament. Okay, thank you. The next coach on the teleconference is Brad Underwood from Illinois. The Illini are the number four seed in the upcoming tournament and will face the winner of Game 4 on Friday afternoon. Coach, good morning, and thank you for joining us. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Yes, good morning. Uh, yeah, we're uh, excited to get through the grind of uh, uh, of a unbelievable 20-game regular season. Um, I thought it was, um, without question, uh, the Big Ten showed why it's the best conference in the country. I think every night that uh, uh, two teams took the court, uh, it was very easy to say that anybody could win. And uh, I think that speaks volumes to 
the terrific coaches, uh, the outstanding players, uh, the the pride that each each institution has, uh, sellouts every place you went, and uh, it should make for a very very exciting uh, conference tournament, and uh, and beyond many teams in the NCAA tournament that uh, uh, will have a chance to do great things. So uh, uh, we're excited for uh, Indianapolis. Thank you, Coach. We'll open the call for questions now. At this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Your first question comes from the line of Henry Bushnell with Yahoo Sports. Hey, Brad. Uh, thanks for taking the time. I had a, kind of a big-picture question. When you look back at this season and with, with the three-point line having been moved back, what effect do you think that has had on college hoops as a whole, and then specifically to your team, you guys have shot a lot fewer three pointers than than you have in previous seasons. Um, was that any was that related to the line moving back at all, or was that more so based on personnel? Well, I think for us, it was more of a systemic change. Uh, we didn't try to to uh, necessarily go into the year saying we're going to shoot less. I think the line has impacted. Um, the game. I think we see maybe a player, maybe a player and a half difference in terms of uh, the marginal shooter. Uh, their percentages are, are, are down, and so maybe people aren't guarding them as well. Uh, I think it'll take us a few years to, to adjust. And, you know, again, the high school kids uh, today aren't playing with the line that, that we are. So, uh, you know, it'll take everybody a little bit to um, to adjust and, and uh you know, I think we'll see what they had initially intended was for the floor to open up, and and I, and I think what happened is the court shrunk. Uh, you know, people didn't guard people, and uh, uh, but uh, you know, it didn't affect us uh, as much as as what we did systemically in trying to change a few things. Your next question comes from the line of Scott Ritchie with Champaign New Gazette. Morning, Brad. Morning, Scott. Um, with the Friday start in the tournament, you could, I mean, there's potential for you to face one of three different teams. I'm just curious how maybe that affects your preparation this week. I mean, do you spend a little time on all three, or how are you going to go about that? Well, the first the, fir- the first few days will be about us. Uh, we've got to clean some things up, um, and, uh, you know, we'll spend more of that on us. Uh, you know, we've got to tweak a couple things that uh, that I want to work on. And then as we have a better idea, uh, you know, we'll touch certain areas that that, that uh, all three of them do, um, you know, through individual drills during the week. But there won't be much of a focus on a singular team until we, uh, we absolutely know who we're playing. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Paul Banks with the Sports Bank. Hey, Coach. How's it going? Doing great, man. Thank you. After the, North, after the Northwestern game, you discussed about living the dream, being the Illinois head coach. I always kind of looked up to this program. Has this season, has it? Has this been what you envisioned someday? Or, and um, where do you see like the future of the program going? Well, I'm excited. I, I think that, um, you know, I think we've had six or seven sellouts here at the end, and and um, State Farm Center has been back as loud as any venue I've I've been a part of and, and been in. And, uh, you know, we've got the greatest fans going. They're extremely supportive. And, uh, you know, I think the, I think the, the, the future is bright. I think it's, everything's in front of us. I think we're uh, – uh, you know, we've got uh, plans for a new practice facility. I think we've we've uh, redone State Farm Center. We've we've uh, uh, gone through some of the the, the growing pains that uh, you have to do in terms of uh, restructuring and, and retooling a program. And uh, um, you know, we made some strides this year, and and uh, we're not where we want to be yet, but uh, we're getting darn close. Your next question comes from the line of Scott Ritchie with Champagne New Gazette. 
Well, this week I don't know that you'll have you may a day off per se, but you've you expressed a little concern about you know a bigger gap between games, and you'll have you'll have that you know heading into Friday. I mean, are, there, are you going about any way to combat maybe the, the sluggishness that the team has had after a long break, or what's kind of your take there? Yeah, I think I think it's a little bit different when you when you've had a uh, when you head into postseason than when you when you're when you're in the middle of a conference play or uh, or the regular season. I think you know now you've got potentially three games in three days. Um, I think that uh, you've got to you got to find that balancing act with the right amount of rest, uh, the right amount of competitive spirit and practice. In terms of getting up and down and 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 trying to keep game condition, but uh, uh, you know when you're when you're you get five or six, seven days in conference play, and it usually means you've got uh, a couple days off, and and uh, you're you're in a position where you've got another game right after that, uh, two or three days later. Uh, it, it's just gonna, it's just a different feel when you've got them back to back to back if you if you continue to win. We can take one last question for Coach. Your final question comes from the line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Brad, I didn't get a chance to ask you this when you played at Ohio State because they were doing senior day as you were having your press conference. But in that game, EJ Liddell, their freshman, really kind of blossomed a little bit. I know that's the guy you recruited. I wonder what you saw from him in that game and what kind of player you think he's going to be in the Big Ten. Oh, he's going to be really good. I plays for a terrific coach uh, in a terrific program, and uh, it's why he was one of the most uh, sought-after young men in in, uh, in this region. And uh, you know, he's he's, he's versatile. Uh, you know, I say this all the time: the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. And uh, he's a terrific young man who you'll see uh, continue to to work and improve. And uh, uh, we got a little taste of it firsthand. And and uh, EJ's a terrific kid and. And uh, had a terrific game. And without him, uh, you know that that um, he impacted he impacted winning and losing that day. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be uh, he'll be a he'll be a pain for everybody in this league uh, for the next three years. Well, coach, thank you for your time this morning, and best of luck in the tournament. Thank you. The final coach on the teleconference is Nebraska's Fred Hoiberg. The Huskers earned the number 14 seed in the upcoming tournament and will open play on Wednesday evening against Indiana. Good morning, Coach. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. If you could give us some opening comments, then we'll go ahead and take questions. Uh, sure. Good morning. Uh, yeah, let me just start out by saying, uh, you know, how incredible this league has been this year. Uh, you know, it's, it's as deep uh, as any conference has ever been. And, you know, I think a you know, perfect example is, you know, the Minnesota team that we played yesterday uh, you know, the talent on that roster, um, you know, the way they shoot the ball, uh, Daniel Laturo is as good as any big in the country. You know, that's a 12 seed in our league. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's been, you know, fun to compete uh, against these teams, against these coaches every day. And, you know, we're looking forward, uh, you know, hopefully in the near future uh, to where we can be competing at the top uh, of this conference. Uh, you know, but it's, it's been an absolute grind every time you step on the floor uh, in this league, and you see some of the upsets that have happened uh, here as of late. Uh, you know, for the true basketball enthusiasts, I think this is going to be as good a conference tournament uh, as there's been, and, and certainly uh, this year there will be. So, you know, I'm excited to see how everything all plays out. Uh, you know, I'll talk a little bit about uh, our roster right now. You know, I'm really proud of the seven uh, that made that trip yesterday, seven available players, uh, four of which were freshmen, uh, you know, two of which have not played uh, a lot of extended minutes out uh, of this point and you know you can see especially this time of year uh you know with everything that's gone on with our team uh you know we continue to go out and compete our guys are tired uh you know hopefully we can find a way uh, to get them to go out and play with great energy on uh, this tournament tomorrow uh as, as we make the trip and into our game for wednesday against indiana uh but i'm proud of the guys that were out there fighting uh for our team yesterday thank you coach we'll open the call for questions now at this, at this time, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star 1. Your first question comes from the line of Chris Baznet with Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, Fred. Uh, just wanted to see if you had any updates as far as the roster looks uh, going forward for the Big Ten Tournament. 
Yeah, you know, as far as our roster is concerned, Chris, I, you know, we're we're still evaluating everything right now, and we'll make a determination tomorrow uh, before we leave on on who will uh, come with us and be eligible for this game. Uh, you know, the way I look at it right now, you know, my job is is to make decisions that are in the best interest of this program. So, um, you know, as far as uh, what's actually going to happen uh, with our travel, uh, you know, I don't have that answer for you at this time. I'll I'll have uh, have it for you tomorrow. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star 1. Your next question comes from a line of Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Fred. I'm just wondering, as you prepare for Indiana, what concerns you about them right now? Well, they're, you know, the biggest thing, you know, obviously, you know, when I look back on our two games against Indiana, the first one being uh, our first game in the league play back in December and, you know, really was one of our better performances of the season. I thought we really went out and competed at a high level, uh, you know, for 45 minutes. It was an overtime game, uh, made some big plays uh, down the stretch. Uh, you know, our guys never uh, stopped competing through, uh, through adversity and, you know, was really pleased with the overall effort and the way we played. Uh, they have incredible size and length and athleticism. Uh, you know, the way that, uh, you know, they're shooting the ball right now, they're, the aggressiveness of green, uh, you know, but they've got some of the best bigs in this conference. You know, they, they crushed us on the glass uh, both times we played them. Uh, you know, they've got great size and, and uh, in athleticism across the board. So it, it is a tough matchup uh, for us. Uh, but, again, we're looking forward to, to you know, almost getting a re- hitting the reset button right now. Uh, every team as you go into postseason is zero and zero. So hopefully we can go out and compete and give ourselves a chance. Again, to ask Coach a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Well, Coach, thank you for your time this morning and best of luck in the tournament. All right, thank you guys. That completes the Big Ten Men's Basketball Coaches Teleconference. I'd like to thank the coaches and media for joining us today. The Big Ten Men's Basketball Tournament begins on Wednesday, March 11th at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Thank you for your coverage of Big Ten Basketball, and have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect.